at radio, Lee Hanish, Andrew Labache, Miguel Antonio Barragan is MIA. Yes, it's his turn to be missing. We apologize. On Sunday was Mother's Day. We accepted that. On Monday, I fell asleep. And on Tuesday, Andrew fell asleep. So we're <laughs> killing it for the week. So Andrew and I decided, uh, I, I believe that Miguel said he, I think, I think he said he was traveling. So uh, we do apologize. We do want to get you guys caught up so that when we catch back up on Sunday, everything's brought up to speed. And we will definitely get um, Miguel's feedback about the fight on Sunday. I'm sure he has a lot to say about it, but we'll cover it. Let's jump right in and rewind the clock, shall we? Uh, here's something that's interesting to me in the news, Andrew. They talked about the Stevenson Valdez numbers peaking at 1.4 on ESPN. They average 1.3. Why is it ESPN can do it and PBC can't do it? Or is one party lying and the other party is? I, it feels like lies across the board. Huh. You know, no, I, I just think ESPN has a bigger platform. Um, you know, it's a lot more sports attached to that where PBC comes behind uh, movies sometimes on Fox or whatever. Might The same crowd might not be wanting to watch a sporting show uh, that is watching the movie or a TV show. So I mean, ESPN has that going for them. You know, sometimes they're coming in right after basketball games, baseball games, and the TV just stays on the sports channel. So better better uh, audience for ESPN. They win. Yeah. Uh, and as we rewind the clock back to top rank coming off of HBO over to ESPN, it looks awfully brilliant at this moment. I don't know if they ever started out that way or it was just Bob being grumpy. And probably, and, and I'm going to guess this, Bob does not have the ESPN. App. Joining us right now, top rank Bob. Uh, Top Rank Bob, do you have the ESPN app on? What's a phone? Cool. <laughs> there you go. And, and there you go, people. Uh, moving forward, Anthony Joshua believes he can lure Tyson Fury out of retirement. Uh, I don't believe Tyson Fury. I believe he'll take a Francis Ngano fight. I believe if Anthony Joshua wins, he'll take a shot at it. And I don't, why wouldn't he? I, I get the whole retirement angle. I really do. Um, I think he's tired of fighting, you know, second-rate WBC people, but I'm sure he would take high-profile $100 million fights. I don't I, I don't buy it. Do you buy it at all? No, I, I believe as long as the number is right, Tyson Fury will, will come back and, and face anyone. Um, the, the numbers just have to be right. And, you know, the... Only so many times he can make what 30 million, 35 million fighting Dillian Whites of the world. So uh, I think he's just he's just letting division warm up again, Lee. And as soon as someone gets hot, he'll come out and fight him. Absolutely. Shakur Stevenson is now calling out Vasali Lomachenko. Shocker. Uh, joining us on the show is Top Rank Bob. Uh, top Rank Bob, uh, it sounds like you have two of your guys that probably shouldn't be fighting each other again. Um, and this never works out exceptionally too well for you. Uh, wanting to fight, I, I feel like you're... I, uh, here's what I got to say, Bob. Uh, uh, the Val Are you getting rid of Vasali? Because I, I think Shakur might be too much. Don't sleep on Vasali Lamachenko. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I feel like we're over the Lamachenko experiment at top rank. Andrew, what's your feeling on clearly they're setting this fight up and it's a super fight it's a great fight now this is devin haney you're talking about or no no shakur, shakur yeah, stevenson vasali lamachenko yeah look um if that i didn't read that yet if that is the case yes it, it does look like they're moving past lamachenko because stevenson just looks like the up-and-comer right now um, with Lomachenko pulling out of the Cambosos fight, he is in his what mid thirties now. Um, you know, maybe they, maybe Top Rank just sees a, a brighter future with with Shakur Stevenson, and he seems ready for a Lomachenko fight. Yes, sir. There you go. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to tell you to go to boxingtonight.io. Visit us on Facebook. 
We have videos. We have all kinds of information. We have boxing schedules. They'll all be updated this week. Uh, our shows generally come out on Sundays, but we are all people who have regular lives. Uh, but please go to boxingtonight.io. Follow us uh, at fight.net.radio and follow at Fight Fiend Mix. He puts up content constantly on all the platforms as well. Wow. That really just jumps us up to Sunday, Andrew. I mean, there's really no other major news except the biggest piece of news that we haven't, like, I've gone through it, but, you know, I don't want to talk about Kel Brooks. I don't want to. So let me say from the top, second straight fight, I got completely wrong. I mean, completely wrong. I thought it was a non-topic. I was so wrong. And it was... A great performance by Bivol. Uh, please take me through it from your perspective. Um, you know, yeah, I would say a great performance by Bivol. Uh, great performance by v- Bivol. I think a little bit of um, overstepping his boundaries by Canelo. I don't think Canelo belongs at 175. Look, Lee, I think we all need to agree Canelo's been fighting out of his weight class now, probably for two divisions. I, I think ever since he entered 168, he's been staring up at all of his opponents. I don't know if there's one guy that they've matched Canelo with in the last two divisions that that have actually looked at him eye to eye. That's a problem going into the future with uh, with Saul. Um, he looked small. He looked overweight. You know, and a guy. A guy's defense is really his his head movement, his upper body movement. It's really not good to be 175 plus pounds the night of the fight. Uh, he look, he's also 31. You know, he's been fighting professionally since I believe the age of 15. Um, has that taken a taken a toll? You know, uh, he was playing golf. There's a lot of things that that we've seen Canelo do, but we've always looked past it, Lee, because he's a he's the face of boxing. You you think sometimes these guys are so dedicated they can't they can't fall off. But you know what? Saul Alvarez has been playing golf tournaments. He he runs around, come, jumps off of jets in pajamas, silk pajamas. It seems like all the time now. Um, maybe the lifestyle has caught up. Maybe all the thirty-five million dollar paydays have caught up to him because that night he looked a lot. He looked very robotic. The the uppercut. When did that become his signature? The, the signature punch. When did the uppercut yeah. become? He he was never yeah. known. He was never known for an uppercut. He was known for getting in there and, and throwing power combinations for twelve rounds. Like you didn't want to get mixed it up with this guy. He knew how to counter with power shots. He knew how to how to you know, break you down. Not, not just this one uppercut. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, again, I understand the spin on the story that, that they were putting up. Uh, when you scored the fight, how did you score the fight? I had it about 115, 113, somewhere in that range. I'm kind of okay with the scores. I'm not going to argue with the score. I never had Canelo winning that fight. Just watching it. Look, I know there's there's people that are upset that Bivol didn't back up Canelo a lot. But it, it just seemed not to matter because I really never seen Canelo hit Bivol. So while, while Bivol was backing up, he was still landing punches four at a time, it seemed like, during his, his flurries. And when Canelo would try to counter back, he was hitting nothing but arms. Um, don't don't understand why they didn't switch up the game plan. Once again, I think Reynoso gets a big fat ass F for his adjusting during a fight. I mean, when things well, are, are going, are, I don't want to interrupt you, but it, haven't we had this discussion about Reynoso and sticking to his game plans and not adjusting this? This seems to be like a tired conversation yeah, on the topic. Valdez, that's because Valdez got worked over by Stevenson two weeks ago. And then in the very next week, Canelo gets worked over by Bevel. 
I mean, this is these are twelve rounds of technically getting breaking broken down, and your trainer has nothing to offer you. Lee, if you can't hit the head, you got to go to the body. If you can't Absolutely. hit the head, you got to get on the inside and you got to break them down. I mean, everyone I know, everyone now keeps going to the Rocky movie and and, and <laughs> Stallone and and looks like Canelo and Bevo looks like the Drago. Where was it? Seriously, right. in the ring, it started it started looking that way. Where where was Reynoso to tell Canelo you have to break his arm? You got to get his arms down. You got to go to the body. Looks like Canelo, agree with you. Looked like Canelo kept thinking, Lee, if I hit him on his shoulders or remember what he did to Callum Smith when they said he beat his arms so much that they they made him fall. Yeah. I don't know if that's what he was going I don't, for. I, no, and I now okay. So like, let's talk about the fallout about this. Ryan Garcia kind of looks like a genius at this moment. Uh, he what got him back. Is, Car, you well, know. What if this is what Ryan Garcia th thought? I, I don't. I'm not gonna fight that way. Like, I don't like. What if it's Reynoso's commitment? What if it's Canelo's commitment? What if it's I, I'm just saying this, even though I don't really believe what I'm saying for longtime listeners. What if Ryan Garcia is just a genius and went, oh, this place is messed up. I'm out. Like, these guys are a car crash. He's riding horses and driving, you know, Bugattis and Genies, Reynoso. Yeah. Pajamas, yeah. Listen, you guys, <clears throat> if you remember, Canelo used to have this clothing line, and he still might, but... He used to have a clothing line that said, no boxing, no life. Well, this this last tournament he did, his clothing line now has a uh, line that says, no golf, no life. <laughs> Things have changed, Lee. Um, just don't know if it's there anymore. Look, Dave, Pacquiao went through it when he wanted to be the fucking movie star over there in the Philippines. De La Hoya went through it when he wanted to be a... Uh, what was he? A Grammy singer? Did he win? Didn't he win a Grammy for one of his CDs? <clears throat> yeah. You got Canelo yeah. out here chasing, chasing, you know, horses and and golf tournaments, the the PGA celebrity tournament or whatever on on a few what a month or so before he's supposed to fight. Very true, which now creates an interesting situation that's happened this week, which is. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do the rematch with Bivol. Good call, bro. Um, it doesn't sound like a Canelo thing in my mind to have a... Because the turnaround on this fight would be epic money. So my only question would be, are you not committed or are you not trained right? And this creates another chain of events where, where now Eubanks is trying to pivot to go get Gennady. And now Gennady's pivoting and looking at other people. Like, this is create, this one event in boxing has created this incredible sort of cataclysmic series of events because Canelo was the quote-unquote Oscar de la Hoya for boxing right now. Like, that's your biggest name. Don't want to break it to you. If Fury's really out of it, that was the biggest marketable star. If you're yeah. Eddie Hearn, you're shitting in your pants at this moment. Oh, don't even get me started on Eddie Hearn again, who once again shot DAZN in the foot. This guy's <laughs> this guy's been nothing but bad news for DAZN on his all of his matchmaking, all of his signings. Gave Joshua way too much money. Gave Triple G way too much money. Has losses for everyone else. I mean, did just Eddie Hearn's been a, a real disaster for DAZN. Um, and it's funny, just a couple of years ago, we were saying he's the promoter of the year who's got this all dialed in correctly. And turns well, around within face. a couple, he, he got greedy. Yeah, he had the heavyweight, he had the two faces of boxing, man. But he didn't know how to manage them. He didn't know how to manage them. He didn't, he didn't know that you don't, you don't take a, a, you know, a replacement guy from the, what, what, what was Andy Ruiz, top 15 or so? And we, yeah. You don't do that. Most of the time, replacements, Lee, you, you don't even hear their names. It's a replacement guy. It's not a fucking, it's not an undefeated contender. Yep. 
it's Los just a, up there in New York. You know, that, uh, Saul Alvarez loses the B-ball. He's got him thinking he can go to head this week. Eddie Hearn, Eddie was by you thinking two hundred pounds. That was Eddie Hearn this week. Yeah. Does he ever watch the training? Does he ever look at Canelo? Has he ever stepped in Canelo's gym to see how he's doing? Does he have anybody doing that? Because I'm telling you right now, Canelo's been staring up, and he looks heavy. I don't know what he was thinking about 200 pounds. How is he going to 200 pounds if this is what he looked like on his second fight at light heavyweight? I completely agree. I completely agree. I just, I'm looking at the series of events that have occurred since Saturday. I mean, it is literally wrecked so many things. And you don't know this because you're not a big YouTube guy. Eddie Hearn spent last week being a rock star. Like he was doing like popular YouTube channels talking about his favorite snacks. He was doing like the stuff that I did with him. And I'm not saying that I'm the guy who kind of set that all up, but uh there he did a lot of casual press the week of the fight like really casual press which really isn't done like in boxing at all and it tells me everybody's eye is off the prize and you got a real problem you got a real problem with your cash cow right if I'm him, I'm literally saying a very hard prayer that Anthony Joshua pulls his shit together. And and no, well, see, what I'm praying for is that Canelo swallows his ego, which I think he did, his pride, and tells everyone, look, 175 is too heavy, I'm going back to 168, and I'll finish my career there. I won't knock him for the 175 run. Lee, once again, we all used to, we've all been saying it, size, size, size. Well, guess what? Size finally mattered. Uh, vegan diet, I got to say, the vegan lifestyle isn't doing too good for boxers right now. Um, I believe Chris Algieri was a vegan lifestyle. Timothy Bradley was a vegan lifestyle. And now Canelo Alvarez introduced a vegan diet to his fight for Bivol. None of them have power. Canelo had no power Saturday night. Chris Algieri didn't have a knockout punch. And Timothy Bradley probably had the best body in boxing, but could not crack an egg. So I don't know where, where vegan stands with boxing, but none of my, I would never tell a fighter to take that diet. It just doesn't have a good track record right now in our sport. Canelo went from a power puncher to a guy that couldn't, do anything to be ball, it seems, Saturday night. And he looked tired. I don't want to blame the diet, but the diet doesn't have a good track record that he was using. I agree. I agree. Uh, well, I just know this from my training. Everybody in MMA, everybody in jiu-jitsu, everybody I've ever met is are caveman keto-eating fools. They've got high-protein, low-carbohydrate, yeah, let me use the term and let's see if this jives out for everybody. He looks skinny fat, right? Like he, he looked doughy to me. He just, yeah. it oh, didn't man. look right. To me, Canelo looked, he looked every bit of 31 on uh, Saturday night. Even, I swear to God, it even looked like his hairline was getting farther back as that fight was. <laughs> That's wow. that fight. He was, was like, losing hair during the fight. Oh, there's the title of the show. Canelo is losing hair during the fight. Oh, that it, one. It, it, uh, that whooping was coming. It's like you, you, I've seen it too many times. It's like, damn, is this the beginning of the end? Is, that, is this it right here? You, now all of a sudden he can't move out of the way. It punches. He's getting hit in the face. Fa face was swelling up. Ah, stood on the road. Tyson and Rogan were having the discussion this past week, right? I think they used the term milky fat. I, mean, if I got the quote correct, but it's that debate of sometimes people just get old in the ring. Sometimes it, it happened to Hopkins. It eventually, like we kept thinking it would happen sooner to Bernard Hopkins than it actually did. 
But eventually, if everybody stays at the dance for too long, it is the age old quote. And especially for a kid, I say that because he's 31, but you've been fighting a long time, bro. I don't know how you like, there's not a lot left in me that would make me want to like do it after making that kind of money. I, that's a lot of money. And, and he a- can say that he's made 300 million just with the zone. That's not even his other uh, money that he made with everyone else. Oh, yeah. um, Promotionally so, speaking so and otherwise. Yeah. He's clearly fine on, on the money side. He's also been fighting since he was 15 years of age professionally. That's not easy. Um, so, so, but I would rather we have this discussion when he loses a at 168. At 175, I'm still going to blame the weight, the size. It, it was just too big. Look, it was real fun and all to see him go after these bigger guys and, and break them down. We knew the division was going to get harder. I've been saying after Bivol, really the biggest fight there was the Joe Smith versus um, Butterbeef. That's that's the real that so Canelo never even made it. That Sergey Kovalev was the weakest link of them all. He fought him for what eleven rounds? I think he stops Kovalev. Yeah. Then Bivol, he doesn't beat. So out of the out of all the champs at one seventy five, he really never got past the 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 second level tier. I don't think he does any better against the winner of of. Butterbee or or Joe Smith, even though Joe Smith lacks in skills, you're talking about another big guy can take a punch and deliver a punch. I don't know if Canelo wants that. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I say it all the time, people. You're going to hear me say this all the time. You want to you know how you beat someone who keeps their hands down? You keep punching. Salute to uh, B-Ball for, for sticking to that game plan. Did not care. Move your head. I'm throwing four. You ain't gonna duck. You ain't ducking all of them. And as soon as he started breaking, so Alvarez down with those big right hands, big jab, big right hand, beautiful one two. As soon as it started landing, Saul was like, "Okay, I got to pick up my hands." But guess what? The young man hasn't picked up his hands in so long. He didn't know how to pick off shots anymore. So it's like, so he's like, hey, I got my hands up, bang, bang. He's still getting hit because he don't know defense. Oh, he knew his hands are supposed to go up. But do you know how to roll a punch? Do you know how to pick one off with your glove? You know, you know what I'm saying, Lee? Do you know how to counter oh, yeah. off? It, he had there was no- nothing. There was nothing. It was the most un-Canelo-like performance that I've seen out of Canelo. When you're talking the Mayweather fight, because you've got to only compare it to another loss for him. You you were just outclassed by a better defensive fighter who was, you know. That he tried, it, to, box. He yeah. tried to box Mayweather. That was that was their stoop, the dumbest game plan once again, Reynoso. I've ever seen someone go in and try to bet, box the best fighter in the world. You're going to try to beat him at what he does? He's called, they call him the best, but you're going to try that that route. Okay, see how that works for you. Well, and here we are again. Bad game plan, and I'm pointing at one person at this point. It's looking an awful lot like Reynoso, uh, and I'm not, look, he, did, he looked really flat. I, and I don't know if he got old. I don't know if he got vegan. I don't know if he got used to the money and couldn't. Tyson Fury was able to do it. Tyson Fury seemed to be able to do it. I got to be perfectly and, honest, and I think if Anthony Joshua showed up, he'd certainly get up and train just as hard as he always trains. And I got to say, uh, two, three o'clock in the morning, leaving the MGM Grand on a Friday night before the Mayweather Canelo showdown. Who's at the bar, Lee? Who's at the bar? But Mr. Reynoso himself. Still talking and chatting with all the people. Never forget that. Let's so, jump ahead to this. It, 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 it just changes boxing's landscape. And in two but, weeks, you're talking ooh. about no more Tyson Fury, and now you're talking no more Canelo. I, you got to take the Gennady fight now. He has no choice. You take the easiest fight for you. that will make you the most money. 
and that's Gennady Golovkin, who's it's a great, clearly got ring rust. It, it's look, this it still works if he just tells people 175 is too big. That's all he has to say, and no, nobody can can call him a liar. The guy was smaller than everyone. He was smaller than Bevo by two inches everywhere, height, uh, weight, and freaking reach. He was small, small, small. Against Kovalev, small, small. Mike McCallum, uh, uh, who's the other? Caleb Plant, 160s or two 168 guys. He was still looking up at both of them. So we, it, it's, not, it's not an excuse to go, I, I tried it. Did it. What was that? That was going to be four undisputed divisions. Lee, no one does that shit. Nobody does that. And, and ah, I don't yeah. want to. That's another... The whole nother show to get into you fucking Mayweather fanboys that were all over the internet as soon as this defeat took place. I got to tell you guys one thing. Don't get too happy about the fall of Saul Alvarez. He's Floyd's biggest win. Always remember that. You can't knock Saul Alvarez too much. He's Floyd's biggest win. They love calling him a paper champ when he loses, yet... When you look at Floyd's career, he has two fighters that he fought in his prime, basically. Two guys that people thought, hey, this is a good fight. That's Diego Corrales and Saul Alvarez. Diego Corrales was about to go to fucking prison like the week after he fights Floyd. And Saul Alvarez is Saul Alvarez. He's a, he's a youngster, but he's undefeated. Mexico is behind him. Everyone's behind him. Those are two, Floyd's two biggest fights. Everyone else, he had fucking, they were already owned. Mosley was already owned by someone. De La Hoya, Cotto, Zab, Judah. These, these guys were undefeated. Luis Castillo, yeah. Castillo had four knockouts before he fights Floyd. Four, four knockout losses, Lee. He had been knocked out four fucking times. Look, Floyd don't own Castillo. Arturo Gotti. Carlos Baldemir, are you guys fucking serious? Watch what you say about Saul. He's Floyd's biggest win. Saul Alvarez has fought champs. He's went four divisions. Okay, he's he's went undisputed. He's still, and by the way, he still has. I, I believe he still has three or four belts here in different yeah. weight classes. Yes. Now, what's scary? What scary Lee is Bebo saying he wants to chase him to 168. <laughs> That's a nightmare. <laughs> he's got a oh, no. now now it's a bad now it's a bad dream. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna he's better pray that that hey, I love how Eddie Hearn's such a sleaze ball too. Eddie Hearn uh, tweets out, look, five years ago I tried to get B ball. What a dick. What a dick. If I was Canelo, oh man, this game is dirty. Swear to God, Lee, he went, you know he went and searched for that tweet. Five years ago, he asked. B-Ball's manager about him. Ooh. Nobody <laughs> knew about B-Ball five years ago. I don't even think we ever talked about B-Ball until this fight. <laughs> and, and, he, and he's trying to get him now. Now he's hot. Uh, well, he wants the big money payday return, and I, I don't know. Uh, hey, look. One thing yeah. One thing seemed Saturday night. You didn't really see that many American celebrities at this fight. They didn't really show anyone. So that's a good thing for Sel Alvarez. Hopefully not too many people watched it on the American side. You come back, you got David Benavides and you got uh, Jamal Charlo. That, that fight for the PBC. You try to get a pay-per-view with them and you try to, try to, you know, get the fight with Triple G. He's got options. Those three fights right there. Could carry him into another year. Maybe one of them gives him a rematch, and and that might be Saul's career uh, as at least an elite fighter. Could be with just those three guys, and he's done. One other fight I think he still has, if if he was really desperate for money, is the uh, Gilberto Ramirez. Ramirez is still out there. He's undefeated. He's known. He needs one big win. If him and Saul wanted to do something, I'm sure they would make millions on the Mexican fan base too. So there's options. At this point, I want him to, to get away from 175, though, because it looked bad. He, he looked out of shape, Lee, and, and he shouldn't look like that at 31. 
Yeah, that's that's a tough route. And it's funny that you bring that up. Saturday, we'll, we'll end on this. Um, this Saturday in Los Angeles might be the craziest boxing day ever. Literally at, wait, one, two, three, three different venues in L.A., if you can believe that crap. Three different venues throughout L.A. There are fights going off this Saturday, and it's funny you bring up uh, Ramirez. In Inglewood, over at uh, the Forum, Triller's doing the Kovalev, Pulev, right, along with Evan Holyfield, Fernando Vargas, uh, Amato Vargas. The entire Vargas family is apparently fighting on this card, which is also kind of amusing. Uh, Out in Ontario... At that arena, Gilberto Ramirez is fighting. And then in downtown at Staples, you got Charlo taking on Castano. Like, there aren't that many fight fans in LA. I don't like this is the worst booking I've ever seen in my entire life, Andrew. Like, how did you guys screw it up that bad? Could you imagine Vegas hosting three fights, three separate, completely different fights on the same night? Like one here, one there, one down. Like there aren't that many people. Like, and and really, and who are, do you know who the other two fights? I missed the other two. I know the Vargas okay. the card. Okay, know- so the Kovalev fight is the one at the That's forum, true. I believe. Yeah, uh, Ramirez on DAZN out at the uh, Ontario Arena, but he's not fighting anybody. Like it's it is a complete crap card. Like it's. Complete crap. He's fighting Dominic Bozil or Bozel. Like, it's just a stay busy fight with nobody on the undercard. Like, it's very, very light. But it's on the zone. Uh, and then uh, Showtime is doing Charlo Castano and they got Jaron Enos on the card. Like, they're booking everything on this Charlo Castano fight. That, yeah, that's the fight of the night. Look, that's the fight of the night right there. And then because Triller is pay-per-view, I love Fernando Vargas. I'm, I'm sure his sons are going to do great, and Evander's son's going to do great. But I can't I can't fork up freaking money for them just yet. Not like that. Um, so no, I'm passing no, I agree. Pa- passing that's- on the Triller card. Um, the DAZN. It I, doesn't I'll- help when you have Sergey Pola. Uh, you've got Sergey Kovalev going, Oh, yeah, I'm worried about going back into the ring. Dude, you're a broken fighter. Like, I'd be terrified if I were you going back into the ring. You better know a whole lot about this is one yeah, of the pool labs. I, I, in the fight. This fight, Lee, is being sold by the Vargas uh, uh, dynasty or however you want to say that. Yeah. Um, they're the ones with the TV shows. They're the ones with, that already have, you know, the, the fan base in L.A. kind of sewed up with their father's last name. So... I don't even know why the fuck Kovalev. That that was actually a week of a a, a waste of a um some money there for Triller. They really didn't need him. No, they didn't. And and in Kovalev's case, with all his legal drama and everything else, dude, you're you're a loss away from. I, I I don't know what they could possibly be paying him to make it that worthwhile, unless he really believes he has another run. And the Ramirez thing, I get it. Ontario. I mean, they could be fighting out at that Hilton. This could be co-promoted by Thompson. I didn't really look into it. Uh, okay. I mean, you got to keep them busy. You got to keep them relevant. It's obvious that they were timing it out because Oscar's got a complete heart on to get Ramirez in the ring with Canelo, which kind of went out the window. So I could see Ramirez being totally flat based on the way I'm sure Oscar built that up for him. And that if, really takes you I, to the uh, Charlo Castano fight. If anything, I think that gets that opens a, a door for everyone to fight Canelo. And Canelo's kind of out there. We don't know what he's going to do yet. So until he starts uh, answering those questions, I think I think everyone's open. I mean, maybe he wants an easy fight to come back with. Uh, you know, I I don't know. We we'll, we will see, but no. Ramirez he needs is, to, he needs know. to go do he needs to go out with uh, Deontay Wilder and do ayahuasca and and sort his life out. Canelo and uh, Deontay Wilder need to go do ay- ayahuasca and you know sort it out the way Deontay is still sorting that. I guess I don't know. Like, hey, 
Hey, tell me, tell me, Floyd isn't hurting for money. What, what, what was up with the ten thousand dollar bet, Lee? Is, is he isn't he a billionaire? This young man. Yeah, bill- this is the guy who used to lay a hundred thousand. Why is it only ten thousand right now? Like, <laughs> If you were that sure on that win, when you're you're at your level and you I, I saw that this was gonna happen, you're dropping six figures on that fight. Easy. He he, he shows us eighteen million dollar watches, five million dollar cars on a fight that you said was easy money, you dropped ten K? Really? Well he, <laughs> he had in his pocket on a Super Bowl. Everyone remember that one? <laughs> oh yeah. The stories are legendary in Vegas of him walking in with briefcases and betting this, crazy money. This one was actually to me and seriously was kind of sad. It was like, oh shit, 10 grand. Uh-oh. <laughs> for, Stay Canelo- tuned for Mayweather versus Canelo too. I I don't yeah, he's crazy. Mayweather, that was a remarkably low bet amount, which I was actually shocked by. Yes, you got it right. No, I don't even know if that's yours. That was probably the highest amount anybody bet on b There was nobody who dropped real money on that fight. There's no way. No way that happened. And something that, tells me he's been making that bet against Canelo every time since his fight with Canelo and barely won this last weekend. That's I'm just saying, like ten grand. It was like it was like he does it just so he could uh, put it on social media afterwards that he bet against them. When it, ten grand, I know he bets more than that. Everyone that's around Floyd is like, yeah, he's been he's been losing on Canelo for a few years now. So we kind of lowered the bets to ten grand. <laughs> Good advisement. They finally got smart, at least on that level, I guess. Uh, Go to boxingtonight.io. We'll we'll have the whole team back this Sunday. We'll catch you up on a very busy Saturday night of boxing. Uh, we will also hear the feedback uh, from Miguel, who is still somewhat MIA. I think he's traveling. I, I want to believe that. Or today he's sleeping. Who knows? We've all taken turns this week falling asleep at 5 o'clock. So I'm staying optimistic for the group. Uh, go to boxingtonight.io, follow us on social media, uh, and we will talk to you guys all next week.